Chapter 11. The Flight from Reality Let us again ask the question, quote, what is the significance of epistemology, end quote, so that we can examine a very practical facet of the problem? If the average man were told that a major problem of philosophy in the modern era was to account for the reality of the external world, or that philosophers felt that the existence of things, quote, out there, end quote, outside our minds is unprovable, he would conclude that the philosophers were crazy and that philosophy is an absurd discipline. There would be two serious errors in such a reaction. First, there would be a failure to appreciate the calibre and ability of the philosophers and their honesty in pursuing their presuppositions as far as they have. Second, there would be a failure to appreciate how deeply this same philosophy has influenced virtually all modern men. Quote, the man on the street, end quote, is a product of modern epistemology. Medieval and Reformation men, as they looked out at the world, whatever the defects of either, still saw the universe as a God-given, God-created reality, and they saw themselves as part of that reality. Modern man, however, has been differently schooled. The implications of his epistemology are very clear. Reality is a part of me. The consequences of such an attitude are far-reaching. They do lead to a flight from reality. If the belief that reality in some sense is an aspect of our consciousness and has its quote-unquote existence as a state of mind is held, then man will be more concerned about the states of mind than about God and the world. Not surprisingly, fiction has played a more central part in modern culture than in any previous society. It has transformed daily life and popular culture Thus, in the medieval era, music had as its major expression the music of the church, sung to the glory of God and man's joy in him. Popular music reflected everyday life. Romantic love became important in certain kinds of music late in that era. Modern music began as a background to royal courts and was designed to make more congenial the royal courts and to facilitate fantasy and pleasure. All the great modern composers of the earlier era, and with some like Wagner well into the 19th century, lived on royal patronage. Their music provided the liturgy of the court, designed to convey the majesty, divinity and harmony of royal life as a background to the court's activities. Opera carried fantasy further. Wild heroics placed man in a dream world wherein portentous consequences hung on every word and act of a man and a maid. The heroic play, tragedy, and various other forms of drama again stressed the grand role of man and his greatness, even in defeat. Novels soon became popular. One of the most, if not the most popular medium in all history of art, and relying on a taste for fiction and an identification with persons of diverse kinds. The 20th century, however, has seen the triumph of fiction and also of revolution which is an attempt to make fantasy real. Modern man now gets a diet of a few hours daily of a dream world via motion pictures and television. Women often are surrounded by the fictions of television all day. The cults of the modern man, religious and otherwise, again thrive on fantasy. The world has ceased to be more than an image in our imagination for all too many people. A popular answer to questions expressing doubts about some measure is, quote, well, the government will do something about it before it happens, end quote, or, quote, someone will come up with an answer, end quote. In brief, reality will bend to man's imagination. There is no belief in a day of reckoning with reality, let alone a belief in the day of judgment. Scientists, we are assured, will reverse the aging process and make the old young again. The next step we are told, is homo deus. This is no longer a belief that the entrepreneur will work to overcome problems, but rather a belief in wish fulfilment, a faith that reality will bend to the imagination of man. Therefore, the council is, quote, hold a good thought, end quote. When monetary crises developed in the 1960s and 1970s, there were more than a few who had turned on those who had forecast these things to blame them for it. All would have been well but for their negative thinking. Quote, the power of positive thinking, end quote, 
had come to represent the implicit faith of modern man. A president like John F. Kennedy was widely admired and idolised because he said and believed the quote-unquote right things while bumbling on confrontation with reality. His thought world somehow created Camelot for the world of scholars and politicians as well as millions of Americans. The radio and television keep man bathed in a dream world and what they do not supply his imagination does. The sexual revolution has deep roots in this flight from reality, in dreams of a consequence-free world of perpetual youth. In brief, modern man is a product of his epistemology. He lives in a dream world, implicitly believing that reality is somehow, or will be somehow, a part of man, and totally at the command of man's imagination someday. His awakening will be a rude one, and God will be in it.